it remains to be seen whether Missouri beats Alabama or Auburn in 2024, but we know the Tigers beat both teams out for a recruit just now. So let's talk about that and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And I have been taken to task by a few people online for calling Missouri's football schedule easy. Well, I'm going to delve even deeper into that particular subject and also what happens if NIL money dries up at some point for the Tigers and perhaps the rest of college sports in general. But but, you know what, before I lead today's program, I do want to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. The terms apply. And Missouri with some really good news this morning as Khalil Jacobs, a six-two, two hundred twenty-six pound linebacker with two years of eligibility left to play. By the way. From South Alabama, that's really an interesting bit of information, too, considering, well, who who just came from South Alabama to Missouri? Oh, yeah, that's right, our new defensive coordinator, Corey Batoon. So, obviously, this is not only a guy who some really big-name SEC schools were after, Alabama, Auburn, and Ole Miss among them, but to me, the fact that Corey Batoon wanted this kid, that kind of tells me, All I need to know on top of the fact that, again, those very big name programs in the SEC wanted him as well. So quite a coup here for Khalil, for, for Missouri and Corey Batoon to get Khalil Jacobs into the fold. And if there is a position on the Missouri roster that could use a little bit of depth, well, linebacker would probably be one of them, probably be in your top three, I would say, along with maybe defensive line and corner as well. So obviously a couple more spots here for Missouri to potentially still play with. And I had been saying, hey, Missouri is no is in no hurry really to take on any p- players that don't provide needed depth. Well, obviously Khalil Jacobs provides needed depth based on his suitors and based on the fact that Corey Batoon, having already been very, very closely familiar with his work, gave him the seal of approval. Great pickup for the Tigers. Now, I had a few people on social media, in particular on Facebook, for whatever reason, take me to task about calling Missouri's football schedule easy before this season. And in particular, my old friend Clayton Baker was not happy with me whatsoever. Well, dang it, Clayton, I'm going to try to make you happy right now. No, I'm just busting Clayton's chops, of course. But here's the deal. There is no doubt that Clayton has a point because the former Missouri cornerback told me, hey, no SEC schedule is easy. And to his point, if you just look objectively at the the projections, you all know I love Mizzou guy Bill Conley and his S&P Plus projections over at ESPN. So let's just stick with those. And according to just those projections, there is no team in the Big 12 for example, that is now, I don't know, 16 million teams or something like that. I think it literally is 16, right? But possibly 18. Again, I can't keep track of any of this stuff. <laughs> Forgive me for, for messing that up. But the point here is that no team in the Big 12 has a harder projected schedule than Missouri this season. The Tigers have the 37th projected hardest schedule in the country. So with well over 130, 125 plus teams in FBS football now, then clearly that's an above average schedule quite comfortably. Not one of the hardest in the country by any means, but certainly well above average. Not an easy schedule if you look at it from a national perspective. 
but I'm looking at it more of from an SEC perspective and everything in life is relative. And this is a relatively easy SEC schedule. It just simply is because even though it's the 37th hardest schedule in the country, it's the easiest schedule projected in the SEC. Now, of course, this is all projections, you might be saying. You can't actually predict the future. Hey, I couldn't agree more. We'll, we'll have to see what happens. Maybe some of these teams that we expect, like, so who knows, maybe South Carolina has a huge breakout season, for instance, under Shane Beamer. I could see something like that happen. There's a million examples of that being possible to where you think, oh, this hard schedule, maybe not as hard as we thought, easy schedule. Well, it turned out it was a little tougher than we thought. There's examples of that from Missouri history. I'm sure that we can all think of, but having said that, if you're going to push back against the idea that this is a relatively easy schedule compared to what Missouri could have gotten, well, let's check out Missouri's schedule against their former sec East mates in the Florida Gators. So if you compare side to side here, as I'm doing on YouTube here, probably a good reason to check out the YouTube feed so you can follow this along. But for those of you listening on audio, I'll try to lay this out as best I can. But when you look at the Missouri and Florida football schedules for 2024, what immediately stands out is the preseason top 25 teams that both are playing. You look at Missouri, well, they've got three of them, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Texas A&M. Whereas with Florida, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, indeed, nine top 25 teams in the preseason the Florida Gators will be playing. And that includes Texas A&M, by the way, who's 25th in this particular poll. Well, that means that they're, at least on paper, again, this is all projections here, the ninth best team that Florida is going to play, whereas that's the third best team that Missouri is going to play. That is pretty remarkable, quite honestly, considering both teams are in the same conference. And also, just quite simply, the non-conference schedule, not only is the SEC part, not only did they get a brutal draw with the likes of Texas, Georgia, Ole Miss, LSU, Tennessee, and Kentucky, but on top of that, the non-conference schedule for the Gators for, and versus the Tigers, there's really no comparison whatsoever. Missouri plays Boston College, UMass, Buffalo, and Murray State. Meanwhile, the Gators play some real rivals. They play Miami. They play Florida State in Tallahassee. They also get UCF and also Samford as well. So Samford and Murray State, you can kind of scratch both of those off the list. That's kind of a wash, of course. But my goodness, there is no comparison there. Those three Florida squads versus Buffalo, Boston College, and UMass, uh, there's just no comparison whatsoever. So again, not saying that Missouri's schedule is easy per se. All I'm saying is compared to what it could have been, obviously compared to what Florida ended up with, just SEC-wise, even removing the non-conference element, that is quite the gauntlet that the Gators are going to have to go through this season. And the more I break down Missouri's schedule, especially compared to the rest of the country, it really does seem like 10 and 2 is the magic number in terms of making the 12 team playoff this season. Well, I just brought up some projections, some S&P plus projections. What is the Tigers odds of making the the 12 team playoff? Well, it might be higher than you expect. It's an eye-popping number, I have to say. I'll reveal it here coming up in just a little bit. But first, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With more than 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. 
And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not wasting cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and keep bringing home huge victories. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. So with the combination of a relatively easy schedule and a ton of returning production before Missouri, S&P Plus gives the Tigers a 63% chance to go 10-2 and two or better. And the reason I think that's a surprisingly high number is is because if you look at a couple numbers over at FanDuel Sportsbook, it really indicates the opposite, that it's more likely the Tigers would win fewer than 10 games. For example, the win total is 9.5, but the over is going to pay you pretty good odds at plus 146. So that tells you that FanDuel is thinking it's more likely the Tigers go under that 9.5 than over. At the same time, also, the Tigers' odds to make the college football playoff over at FanDuel are plus 184, so even higher than the plus 146 is that payout for the Tigers to make the college football playoff. So, you know what? I'm going to go with S&P Plus here. I've followed those numbers for years, and by golly, Bill C is definitely a true son, no doubt about that. But really, that also makes me think, frankly, since I've just laid all that out here logically, not only today, but the last few days on this program, I think 10 and 2 is the magic number. The Tigers go 10 and 2 in the regular season, almost with regardless of, of who those 10 wins and two losses come against. I think more likely than not, like I'm talking 85, 90% of the time, maybe even higher than that, I think that gets you in the 12 team playoff, regardless of a relatively easy SEC schedule because that's the thing. It's relative. Even though it's the lowest end as as it could get in the SEC, now you're comparing it to the rest of the country. And that's where I think the fears of, well, maybe Missouri could get dinged with its relatively easy schedule. Probably not. Again, compared to the Big 12 and especially the ACC, that type of deal. I shouldn't say especially. I, I haven't looked as deeply into that as I should have. But I do know that there's no doubt that the ACC teams have far easier schedules for the most part than Missouri. And I know every team in the Big 12 does. So that's all to say, I don't think that a 10 and two is going to come backfire against Missouri. So long story short, plus 184 for Missouri to make the college football playoff in terms of, Hey, you want to bet on Missouri and have a, have, try to get some value out of the Tigers. Think maybe they're even slightly underrated at this point, despite last season. Well, if the Tigers still have something to prove, I think that's a good one there. Make the top, make the college football playoff at plus 184. I think decent value there for sure. And speaking of something to prove, well, I was surprised to see no Missouri Tigers depicted or a, a Missouri flag, Truman the Tiger, anything in the new cover of the college football 25 video game coming out. Again, that is that is a slight diss because there's no doubt that pretty much every other team that is a preseason top 10, top 15 type of squad was depicted on there in some way or another. So if Missouri wants to take that as a huge insult, another chip on the shoulder, sh shoulder say not only do we have something to prove, by golly, we have more to prove this season. Well, I hope I've put a little bit of fuel in their fire. And now, how about some more Florida Gator talk, huh? Huh? No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, I do want to talk about name, image, and likeness a little bit via the Florida Gators because, holy moly, Jaden Rashada, a former Gator quarterback suing Billy Napier and a Florida booster over what he's saying is a lack of payments in an NIL deal. Basically, they broke their contract and word on the deal out of a promised upwards of $14 million 
in NIL payments. So a lot going on there for sure. And what's interesting is a lot of people just, especially seeing those types of eye-popping numbers thrown out there for a guy who hasn't even really played all that much yet. He, he transferred out of, well, excuse me, never ended up signing his letter of intent with Florida because of all this, or at least withdrew his intent, which, whichever way I should properly be saying that, but eventually ended up going to Arizona State last season where his father had previously played. Well, now this talented young man has ended up at Georgia this season. So we'll see if, he, if uh, the Bulldogs are a beneficiary there. But again, just the fact that these massive amounts of dollars are being thrown around millions of dollars, not just seven figures, but apparently eight figures sometimes as well. That's really, that's, you got to wonder if that's sustainable. A lot of Missouri fans are wondering if our own name, image, and likeness infrastructure is sustainable. Obviously donors, Hey, you, you get enough bus eventually Maybe you're going to get sick of throwing out another half million, million dollars, whatever it is on the next kid if, well, I'm starting to lose faith in my coaching staff that they're identifying the right players, that kind of thing. But that's the deal. I, I think we talk a lot about or just the, the word alignment is th thrown around a lot in college athletics, and usually it's in reference to the athletic director and the head coach that type of thing. Well, these days it's also really important to have alignment between your head coach and your boosters more so than ever. That's always been the case. I think that may even be more the case now, now that the boosters are not just involved in simply funding massive stadium renovations and all that, but now much more directly involved in picking the players, if not picking the players, but help getting them here. Let's put it that way. They're a lot more involved in the recruiting process. So the thing is, I, I got to think a lot of these people, though, a lot of these big money, money donors have to know what to expect in recruiting, especially with quarterbacks. My goodness, is Brian Smith, the scout master here at Locked On, has said many times, Quarterback is maybe the toughest position of all to evaluate at the high school level. It's also the most important position in college football. So what does that mean? You're going to be throwing a lot of money at the position, and you're going to be burning a lot of money at the position too. I think that's just the cost of doing business. It's almost like looking at it like an options contract or something like that. Sure, I might have nine or ten that – that literally go to zero, but the one that I have that took off and went big time in the money, well, that basically made me a fortune. And that's what a big time quarterback is. Somebody who can take your entire program to another level. And certainly there is the human element of, of what I'll say is new car smell. We all have this a little bit. We, we buy the new thing and well, when that new car smell wears off a little bit, you get bored with it, and the new car smell people especially want to move on to the other thing. Again, it's it's a totally understandable and very human impulse. But again, I think really successful people tend to be patient. And I believe when it comes to NIL, the teams who will benefit most in the long run from this new landscape are the teams who have patient donors who look at the big picture and have actual relationships and trust with their head coach. I think that's a reason, an obvious reason, it's basically been reported down in Arkansas, that that's a reason, for example, why Eric Musselman, the Razorbacks former head coach, is at USC now. So again, I just think this is this whole new world of name, image, and likeness. We're still so early in it. People are trying to figure it out. So it's understandable that some people might get cold feet. So who's going to win? Well, probably some people with who are who who don't get cold feet. Basically, the people who have a real steady hand and can get off a smooth shot under pressure. Now, Gary Pinkle and his program was famous for developing players, for sure. And maybe the most famous example of that is Charles Harris, a guy who 
for all intents and purposes, was basically a basketball player when he signed with Missouri, a guy that the recruiting experts and analysts barely had any idea he was whatsoever, and some quite literally were going, wait, who the, who's Charles Harris? Who is this guy Missouri has signed? Obviously, he ended up as a first-round pick, one of the great stories in recent Mizzou history. But these days, can you really even get excited about a guy like that? What is the balance? Let's talk about the projects and actual development in football coming up in this weird world we have in just a little bit. But first, you know what? I want to shout out game time for an absolutely fabulous time at Kauffman Stadium yesterday. Yes, they gave me some game time credits as a loyal Mizzou fan, and I was happy to use them at for an absolutely fabulous ticket at Kauffman Stadium. Got a great price of just $73 for a ticket right behind the D Royals dugout, just about 10 rows behind it. Got to see Bobby Witt have an absolutely incredible game. So, you know what? Not only... Is that the best place to get last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals? It's easy to find and buy MLB tickets. And for every kind of event in your area, whether it is NBA playoff tickets, maybe it's Major League Soccer, literally anything you could possibly imagine. And here's the best part. They have the lowest price guarantee and game time will credit you the 110 percent of the difference if you find a lower price at a competitor so download the game time app create an account and use code locked on college for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-c-o-l-l-e-g-e -E for 20 dollars off Download game time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now it's going to be hard for Eli Drinkwitz and his staff, or really any staff for the most part, to better the Pinkle era in terms of developing players, but certainly there's been a lot of good development under Drinkwitz. Brady Cook, what better example could there be of a guy who's improved immensely in the last few years. Of course, Dalen Carnell, a guy who didn't play at all as a true freshman, to my knowledge, is now one of the best defensive players on the team. There's a, there's a ton of examples of that. Those are just the first two that popped into my head. But when it comes to somebody who's a true project, somebody who's going to take probably at least a couple years to get on the field at Missouri, well, for example, Dayton Hopkins may fit that bill, a guy from Herman, Missouri, with a really impressive athletic build, a six foot six, long guy, athletic, you know, played football in Herman. So it's hard to know the level of competition there. Also, he was originally thought to be a tight end. Missouri's thinking, let's play him more at defensive end now. We'll see what happens there. I'd love to see Hopkins obviously turn out to be a stud from a local place like Herman. That would be fantastic. But that's one of the reasons why at times I worry about the future of college athletics. Listen, right now it's all fine and dandy. I'm talking further down the road here. Stuff that eventually it took a while, but all the people who said, hey, Major League Baseball, watch out for this. Again, it took a while, but we're kind of seeing it now. Again, I said I went to the Royals game yesterday. A really, really fun Royals team. Not exactly the biggest attendance I've ever seen. That seems to be a trend across Major League Baseball. Hopefully it picks up here this summer, especially in KC. But I digress. The point here is with Dayton Hopkins and projects in general, in the world of the portal, it just seems like hardly anybody wants to sit around and sit on the bench for two years anymore. And understandably so. Everybody wants to play. And there's certainly an argument to be made that playing is the best development of all. But again, I'm talking mostly from a fan's perspective here. It's just a lot harder to get excited about these guys. If you think about recent years, who's the real, especially an off the radar guy? I mean, I was, you know, Dalen Carnell was a four star recruit out of high school, for instance. Hard to give 
you know, it's hard to exactly give Missouri a, a gold trophy for developing Carnell. They do it a good job, but it's not really, I'd give them almost more credit for the recruiting aspect of the Carnell part. And you can't even really call Cody Schrader a project, by the way. Certainly he worked his butt off, but as soon as Cody Schrader showed up on campus, he was a part of the rotation. It didn't take that long. It really didn't. He was just a guy that worked his way up, not only through Truman State, but proved himself as a walk-on. There just wasn't much development there, is my point. But it's also just a question overall. What is patience today in college football? You know, Clemson, interestingly, and Dabo Sweeney are really bucking the trend. They, along with the two or three service academies, are the only teams that have not taken a player in addition in the transfer portal. So they're going, they're doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on high school classes and development. And short term right now, that's probably going to hurt Clemson, to be honest with you. It almost has to. So Dabo Sweeney is really betting on himself here. And I guess his own alignment, I guess, with the rest of Clemson's administration and well he'd better hope the fan base and the donors and all of that good stuff because I'm sorry if you're going to sit out the portal that's one thing you certainly can't sit out na- name image and likeness but at the same time if I'm an NIL donor and I'm throwing hundreds of thousands of dollars around and I see that my head coach is not using the portal well maybe that is a reason where well, I pull my wallet back a little bit. So anyway, just a lot of interesting stuff happening behind the scenes in college football. Lord knows I'm not in the NIL booster club, that's for sure. And maybe someday if this podcast really takes off, we can all dream, right? But hey, you know what? Until next time, I am John Miller, and thanks as always for listening to Locked on Mizzou.